We meet an unassuming pet photographer, Brian Lighthouse, in his studio, Lighthouse Photography, where he captures cute moments for clients' pets. He's not super talented at his job, but his assistant, Tanya, seems more comfortable manipulating the animals into their poses or getting them to participate in the photo shoot. She works her magic before the camera, initially running into some issues. She quickly gets the dogs up on their feet, dancing with her. Vladko Nikitin sits in a restaurant across from two INS workers, discussing citizenship paperwork. He explains that he's invited them to help expedite his daughter's immigration paperwork, offering them a chunk of money as a bribe. They don't rise to it, saying they'll be keeping closer attention to Masha's paperwork. Meanwhile, Brian is handling a problematic dog client at the photography studio. The dog growls at Brian but shows affection towards his owner. The owner explains he needs to tickle the dogs behind to get him to behave, which Brian isn't comfortable with, but he can be coerced. Tony walks into the studio on them but seems to understand. The following client shows up early with her cat and Brian warns her not to bring the cat into the studio too early. She doesn't remember, and the sizable snarling dog chases the cat around the studio. Tanya locks herself in the room while the cat ultimately falls victim to the dog on the set. Afterward, Tanya apologizes, leaving for her modeling class. She tries to make an advance on Brian, confused why he hasn't asked her out yet. They've worked together for a month, and clearly she's expected him to be attracted to her. He's uncomfortable, but doesn't want to hurt her feelings. Tanya kisses him before leaving, though he doesn't seem very swayed. Brian, suffering from stress, goes to an acupuncturist to try and relax. The acupuncturist begins adding the needles into his skin, but things go south when the thugs from the restaurant come in to retrieve him. Full of needles and half-dressed, Vlako sits across from Brian and explains that he's not kidnapped the other man and brought him there to make amends. He explains that the call from the previous scene was his wife's cat, and he needs to make up for the loss. Brian offers money, and in return, Vlako offers violence. They laugh uncomfortably, and Vlako explains Brian needs to marry Masha, his daughter. Brian's uncomfortable with this situation, but Vlako explains it's marriage on paper. When Brian tries to leave, the thugs push him back down, and Vlako not so subtly threatens him again. He finally agrees, for fear, for his own life. Brian calls his mother at his apartment, lying up and relaxing in her home. She's not so pleased about being called, but she tells him he should marry the mobster's daughter. His mother doesn't seem to understand the gravity of the situation, focusing on small details and the fact that Brian doesn't have anything else going on in his life. He should just take the circumstances he's been given. He barely has a chance to respond before she hangs up on him. Vlako takes Brian on his private jet to see Masha, giving him a nice ring to provide Masha with when they meet. The plan is to convince the agents and everyone that the nuptials are legitimate. Tanya and Brian get into it while he edits the proofs for his clients. Tanya doesn't believe the whole situation, saying this girl is fake and made up. However, Tanya seems to have everything mixed up, saying that she doesn't get dumped and Brian can't dump her. Brian reminds her that they haven't gone out and that she can go ahead and leave him if she likes. But she professes her love and he realizes how differently they perceive their relationships with one another. He tries to set the record straight. Instead, she storms out. Brian is left in his studio with the revelation. The thug planning to later marry Masha, Brick, is running through their story with Brian outside on the street together. They go through how Masha and Brian supposedly met, how they proposed, and all the smaller details. The two of them go through even smaller details together, and Brian keeps trying to make jokes as they talk. The questions go through the things she enjoys, her favorite color, and more. Brian asks what she looks like, and he says she's beautiful. Not what Brian thinks when he believes he's originally met Masha. The woman he finds in the bar has a unibrow and bad teeth, though he realizes he's confused rather quickly. He's left looking blindly through the club before a brunette woman approaches him and the two go somewhere a little more private into the back of the facility. They discuss how awkward the situation is, but she's a lot prettier than he expected her to be. She clears the air, making sure it's clear that they're on the same page. The INS agents from before keep careful surveillance of the two of them, and Brian does his best to act naturally something that doesn't come very easily to the awkward man. Masha pulls him out onto the dance floor, where he showcases his absolute lack of dance skills. Masha quickly redirects him, slowing things down. They have a tender moment together, or so it seems, and the INS agents decide to leave. Brian doesn't want to pull away until he realizes they're still being watched by Brick, who's known to have a jealous streak. 
Brian is approached outside his studio by the two INS agents. They begin to question him thoroughly, poking holes immediately in his story and asking him like they know something is wrong. They decide to leave once they offer him a way out, but he claims to have nothing to hide. However, when he opens his apartment, Tanya is spread out suggestively in leopard lingerie on his bed. Brian freaks out, but she continues crooning at him while he ushers her out of the house. Vlaco toasts the newlywed couple at the wedding, including a drunk and jovial Brian. His attitude is turned around since he realized Masha was attractive. Tanya crashes the wedding by throwing her body around, and the INS agents are dressed up like bartenders to keep an eye on the procession. Suddenly, the crowd begins chanting, in a show of tradition, that they have to kiss until the wine is sweet. Rick doesn't like the display, but Vlatko stops him. Tanya makes her way onto the stage in front of the whole crowd. Meanwhile, the INS agents make a note of his little girlfriend. Brian apologizes to the crowd, professing his unwavering love for Masha, and only Masha. It seems to go over well with everyone except for Vlatko. Vlatko pulls him aside, threatening him if he touches Masha on their honeymoon. The honeymoon has to happen to sell the marriage. Masha's mother is still angry over her cat. The two go to Tahiti for their honeymoon, sent to a beautiful island resort. Masha's become distant over the plane ride, and Brian wants to make friends. She seems skeptical, but willing to listen. When they make it in, they're turned away because of a storm system threatening their travel. They ask if there's any way to salvage it and get there. Hugh Ernesto, the eccentric driver behind the desk. He says he'd be willing to bring them in, despite the weather system coming in. If they hire Ernesto, it means sticking to their original plan, which doesn't seem very safe, but they do it anyway. Ernesto flies them through the tropical storm, through lightning and thick clouds. Ernesto isn't fully paying attention and is underreacting to the dire circumstances around them, refusing to say they're crashing because that's too negative of a turn. However, they somewhat crash onto the ground where they need to be. Despite the circumstances, Ernesto gets them where they need to go, unloading their bag with the bellhop. He then has to tip the man, despite everything that went on. He does, but his gesture is reluctant at best. Masha and Brian connect in the hotel room over a glass of wine. Masha doesn't love the situation, wishing she was elsewhere for her honeymoon. After all, she says she won't be marrying Brick because she wants to marry someone she's in love with. He explains his work and she opens up about her plans to open a dance studio. They toast to finding happiness, though Brian can't really believe that they've gotten married. Quickly Brian realizes that it will be difficult to stay away from Masha on this trip, but he runs off quickly after. Later at the bar, Brian grabs a drink alone and meets an attractive hotel waitress named Lonnie. She approaches him, offering another drink, and asks why he's drinking alone if he's in the honeymoon suite. She says he needs to inject some romance into their life and suggests giving him a dance lesson. Masha catches Brian alone, dancing with the woman, and in misreading the situation. This causes her to storm off and assume he's a womanizer, which is the thing she hates more than anything. He sees Masha storm off and runs after her, but Masha wants nothing to do with him. Back on the mainland, Brick and Vlaco realize they have no contact with the newly married couple. In a fit of continued jealousy, Brick plans to follow them to the island to keep a closer eye on them. The waitress feels bad that she played a role in the fight between them, approaching Brian in the lobby. She suggests to Brian to take Masha out on a romantic outing, talking about an unbelievably romantic secret cove surrounded by tropical rainforest. Brian and Masha make up back in the hotel room and he invites her to the private cove. They have a tender moment before trekking out to the cove. Playfully, Brian lightens the mood by claiming his mother killed his father, but Masha catches on quickly, laughing it off with him. While teasing him by the secret cove, Masha runs into the rainforest, where she's suddenly kidnapped and goes missing. Brian chases after her, searching for Masha in the forest before assuming she's returned to the hotel. He discovers that his psychotic assistant, Tanya, is in love with him and has tracked him down to the resort. Brian asks the attractive waitress for help after receiving a ransom call from Masha's kidnappers. The three make plans, but Brick storms to the right as Lonnie and Tanya escape off the balcony, meaning Brian has to face Brick's wrath alone. Brick, in turn, finds a condom that Tanya had brought on the wrecked, unmade bed and assumes that Brian had gone back on his word and tried to take Masha's virginity. He, in turn, attacks Brian. Brian barely escapes and Brick calls back home to Masha's father, informing him of Masha's kidnapping but blaming Brian as the kidnapper. The kidnappers, however, are the INS agents who have followed the couple around this time. Blacko is enraged. Ernesto is called by Lani, his cousin, to enlist him in the search with his helicopter. They make a hasty escape in the machine, queuing a chase scene that ends with the group later crash landing in a fishing village. 
They rest on a beach, but Ernesto and Tanya instantly connect, kissing passionately and unaffected by Masha's dire condition. This enrages Lonnie and Brian, who leave Ernesto and Tanya to nearly have <laughs> in a boat on the grass. However, Briggs shows up and knocks them out, revealing Briggs' involvement in the kidnapping. Lonnie and Brian go in separate directions while Masha can escape the prison the INS agents have made for her out of a surfboard shack. She tries to find Brian, driving a jeep stolen from Brick. The two crash the jeep, which erupts in flames as they escape on foot. They outrun the three culprits and find a friendly old-time village that welcomes them in with dinner, dancing, and some fun, just like Masha described her dream honeymoon. The two have <coughs> and wake to a cheering village celebrating their copulation. Brian finds the village alongside the two agents and engages to fight with the lovers. Brick is ready to kill Brian, but Lonnie and Ernesto bring in the helicopter, catching Brick off guard. The distraction is enough for Misha to grab Brick's gun, shooting him in the back and leaving him to fall off the side of a cliff, bringing Brian with him. Masha, in shock, terrified of the idea she might have killed Brian too, then sees Brian in the waves unharmed. When they're finally reunited with Masha's family, the harrowing event leads Vlatko to give his blessing. However, Brian ignores his feelings, declining to get married to her because he wants her to be happy and married to someone she loves. Masha is heartbroken and continues with the plans of her old life, taking dance lessons. One day, unable to focus on the dance routine she was in the middle of, Masha leaves and finds Brian outside. He's ready to properly propose to her, having changed his mind. The crowd around them applauds, ending the film as the camera pans away from the kissing couple. And that's gonna wrap things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this recap as much as we did. If you liked the video and want to look into other videos with us, click on the like button and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. That way, you won't miss a single video.